Now that the M4 MacBook Air has been out for a few weeks now, I wanted to discuss not just my experience using it, traveling with it, and having it as an everyday computer, not just for productivity purposes with work, but also for video editing. I wanted to discuss my experiences using it comparative to the M1 MacBook Air. As I used that machine as my everyday computer for around three years, I brought it with me on set a lot as a DIT machine. And for those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Jeff Fagan. I'm a filmmaker and content creator. I've been doing this since 2008 for quite a while now. And the MacBook Air series of computers really opened my eyes to what can be done as far as travel computers, because they let me bring a full on computer on set and let me transfer the footage from my cameras with a super small profile to an external hard drive. Now on most sets that I'm on, we hire what's called a DIT. And one of their main jobs is to transfer the footage from cameras to hard drives while, or external drives while we're doing our thing. But on a lot of smaller shoots, I don't really have the luxury of hiring a DIT. So I've used the M1 MacBook Air for a while as my computer. And then after a while, I needed the Thunderbolt 4 speeds. So I upgraded to an M3 Pro MacBook Pro. But now with the M4 MacBook Air out having Thunderbolt 4 speeds, I've decided to take another look at it. And after using it the past few weeks, I've been really excited. I'm going to be honest with you, I haven't come to any concrete conclusions. So this isn't going to be a full on review. I'm probably not going to do one of those until I've had it for at least a month or two, but make sure to stay tuned, hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest video so you see when I do come out with that video. What the M4 MacBook Air has changed for me after a few weeks has honestly surprised me. For what I originally purchased for small, light work has completely shifted the way that I travel, pack laptops with me on a daily basis, and work on the go. This is the $999 base model version of the M4 MacBook Air with a cool little cover on it that makes it a lot more rugged when I'm traveling. It has a 10 core CPU, eight core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM standard, which is part of the reason getting these base models actually makes sense for a lot more people than it did with the M1 MacBook Air. And has 256 gigs of storage, which that is still a really big limiting factor depending on who you are. Now, speaking of portable, one of the things I really loved about the M1 MacBook Air that I could still do with the M4 MacBook Air and a case on is put it in bags like the sling bag that are really more meant for cameras and tablets. And I couldn't do that with the M3 Pro MacBook Pro, but with my MacBook Airs, I could literally just slot this thing in, put my cameras in and I'm good to go. I can now bring laptops with me on a daily basis in situations that I wouldn't really normally bring a laptop with me just because of everything that's involved. But in this bag right here, I have the M4 MacBook Air. I have a slot for my Sony FX30 in the lens that I'm filming on right now, even an additional lens that's a telephoto lens, although it's really small. So, I mean, this doesn't take up that much room. Uh, that's part of the reason I have this zoom lens. But then I also have an external drive. I have a power cord. I have the small little anchor power charger. Actually, let me grab that out right here. I bring this small little charger right here, 30 watts, not only charges the laptop, but charges the FX30, charges the Osmo Pocket. It's really easy to do. On the back right here, I've got a slot for my phone. I've got my external SSD drive. So when I am editing on the go, it, I at least have something that has nice fast storage speeds and I could get my work done. Now, when it comes to editing with the M4 MacBook Air, I've been exclusively using DaVinci Resolve, and I've really just been editing YouTube videos and podcasts. I haven't done anything major on it. So even though I've done the whole thermal mod, which if you don't know about that, I'll link to it in the description below, basically improves the thermal performance of the M4 MacBook Air. But I haven't had any work that's really pushed it to those limits. What I can tell you is comparing it to the M4 Mac Mini, you get a little bit more power out of the M4 Mac Mini, obviously for less money, but you don't get the portability. So using it while I've been on the go, traveling, going around town as an everyday computer, it's been fine. I've been able to do all of my tasks with it. So I'd say, I think most people are gonna be fine with the M4 MacBook Air, even the base model. But at the same time, there are a lot of pros who have extensive use, whether it's you use a lot of effects, you do a lot of 3D rendering. A lot of people discuss video gaming. I'm gonna get to that in another video other than 
I don't know many people who video game on a Mac. Let's just be honest here. I actually got a new device that I'll discuss in the future. Um, this Asus Ally X, which is smaller than the MacBook Air and is a full on Windows uh, X, you know, machine that does all the video gaming I need. It's like in the form factor of a switch. I actually got it right here. But regardless, this has been my kind of gaming machine that I've been using. I don't really use a MacBook Air to game. Uh, but like I said, this has full on windows. So this thing makes sense to game. I know it's a little bit of a tangent. I don't get why a lot of people talk about video gaming because most of the games are not available for Apple computers. I mean, I wish they were. I even Fortnite, I wish that whole lawsuit didn't happen, but that's why I don't really discuss gaming in these reviews. And I'll get more in depth in it too when I do my full review on the M4 MacBook Air. But as far as editing, it's been able to handle everything just fine for me. Obviously, when it comes to productivity, not an issue. Handling emails, watching movies. It's been really great just because of how small, how light it is, and the fact that I bring it with me everywhere now, kind of like you'd bring around an iPad. Here's the smart thing when it comes to the M4 MacBook Air and its value. Not just value of this overall machine with how powerful it is, but the resale value. If you plan on holding on to this machine only for a few years until you could upgrade to maybe a better MacBook Pro or whatever it may be, you're gonna get the best bang for your buck when it comes to the resale value of this machine because you didn't do any upgrades. You know, one of the things I realized when trying to sell my M3 Pro MacBook Pro is how much money you lose on the resale value with some of these higher end Mac machines, especially if you plan on doing the upgrades to them. I upgraded the hard drive to one terabyte. I also got the upgraded GPU and CPU, and I'm gonna lose over $1,000 trying to sell that machine used, which is why I'm probably not going to at this point, where even with my M1 MacBook Air, after over four years, I can get $600 for that machine, and I only paid $900 for that back in late 2020, which is pretty insane. And it's the same value proposition for any of the lower end Macs. When you get some of the base model computers from Apple, they tend to lose the least amount of resale value. And the more you add to them, whether it's RAM, hard drive, whatever it may be, you typically don't get that back. So the resale value with these cheaper Macs it makes a lot of sense to get them if you only plan on holding on to these computers for maybe a year or two and then planning on reselling them afterwards. So here we have the M1 MacBook Air sitting right next to the M4 MacBook Air. Now I used the M1 MacBook Air for just over three years as my main traveling computer. I used it to not only edit videos while on the go, but to watch videos, to do productivity like emails, surf the web, all that kind of stuff. And then after a few years, it just kind of got long in the tooth. The eight gigabytes of RAM was super limiting, which we'll go over later on in today's video. But let's talk about the differences in specs between both of these computers. Now, the M1 MacBook Air has an eight core CPU and a seven core GPU, while the M4 MacBook Air has a 10 core CPU and eight core GPU. So right off the bat, you can tell a huge upgrade for the M4 MacBook Air without even knowing the specs of each of the cores, which are obviously going to be better on the M4. The M1 MacBook Air also had a 256 gig hard drive in the base model, also had eight gigabytes of RAM in the base, and it had two USB-Cs on the side that are Thunderbolt 3, where the M4 MacBook Air comes standard with 12 gigabytes of RAM, still has that 256 gigabyte hard drive, which is not a lot of space, but it also has the MagSafe port on the side, which solved one of the main problems I had with the M1 MacBook Air, but it also has two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the side as well. Now, that was a huge deal for me because I was using the M1 MacBook Air on gigs as a DIT computer, meaning we were using it to take all the footage off of my cameras while on set and transfer it to external drives. And part of the thing that got annoying after a while was the fact that it was limited to Thunderbolt 3, so I couldn't get the speeds of some of my Thunderbolt 4 drives out of this machine. Now, after using the M4 MacBook Air the past week, it reminded me of a lot of the things I did with the M1 MacBook Air that I couldn't do with my M3 Pro MacBook Pro. Although there's a lot of comparisons saying how close in size it is to the MacBook Airs, it really isn't. Maybe width-wise, when you look at the width and the length, but when it comes to the height, 
The MacBook Air is still considerably thinner than a MacBook Pro, even with a case on, which lets me put the MacBook Airs in slots that are really meant more for tablets. The M4 MacBook Pro is almost an oversized tablet, which is one of the reasons why this is going to be my travel computer again, just due to the size. I was able to bring it here today and again, put it in a slot in my backpack that was meant for a tablet. And I could still bring some of my higher end cameras and have my laptop with me at all times. So here are both computers and you can see the difference in the port layout on the side. We have the two Thunderbolt 3 ports here on the top MacBook Air and we have the two Thunderbolt 4 ports and the MagSafe port, which was a huge deal for me because with the M1 MacBook Air, a lot of the times I had a charger plugged into one of the ports and so I was only able to use one Thunderbolt 3 port a lot. And that's what made me have to go buy Thunderbolt 3 hubs from OWC, really Thunderbolt 4 hubs, but they worked with Thunderbolt 3. Where now that really isn't as much of a problem. Even on the MacBook Pro, I'm really only using two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports at all times, especially because of this MagSafe. And I'm typically not using the third. So going back down to two ports on the M4 MacBook Air really hasn't been an issue for me at all. Then on the other side, you can see right here, they both just have the single headphone jack. And then let's talk about thickness. So it looks like on first glance that the M4 MacBook Air is thicker than the M1 MacBook Air, but really they're about the same. The difference is that on the M1, it kind of is thinner at the edges and then gets to be about the same thickness when you get past the edges as the M4 MacBook Air but the M4 MacBook Air just holds the same thickness the entire time. So between the thinness, the weight, it's just what makes me want to use the M4 MacBook Air over my M3 Pro MacBook Pro just because of its size. And I can use it as an everyday travel computer and bring it with me a lot more than I was bringing my MacBook Pro. So now we're here in Parkland, Florida, and I brought my whole bag with me. This is my everyday travel sling. It's really meant more for camera gear and tablets, but as you can see right here, it actually fits the M4 MacBook Air no problem. And as I look back at the two weeks I've been using the M4 MacBook Air, what it really comes down to is it's really changed the way that I travel. It's changed my portability with a laptop, bringing me the ability to bring a laptop anywhere I go and also being able to edit, do all of my work from anywhere just because of how powerful this computer is. And then of course, the value. For $999, you really can't go wrong. This is the best value laptop in Apple's lineup. So if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. And if you got knowledge and value out of today's video, make sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to keep up to date with the latest videos on the channel. And until next time, my name is Jeff Fagan. Thank you for joining me as always, and I will catch you in the next video.